Let me welcome our viewers from across North America and around the world to the studios of Platform Media International, PMI Sports. I'm yours sincerely, Joe Ehizode. Welcome. Today we have in our studio a very good friend and international athlete of repute. And it's not that person than what we call the champ in Canada and also the champ in Nigeria, Daniel Igali. Gali, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me on your program. So where do we start? It's either in Canada you, you, are, you are head in all, in Nigeria you are also one of those top athletes that are recognized and now you proceeded to become an administrator and also a member of parliament. So, but today, that Gali, we're going to talk about sports. All right. Because that's what, where you started from, right? Yes. I remember when I came to Canada, the first year I came to Canada, you won the World Championship. Yes. And you beat one guy from Turkey, who well, American, yeah, American. American, American. Mar Lincoln McRae. Lincoln McRae, who has been giving you all kinds of, and you defeated him. And then you proceeded to the Olympics where you made it all and won the first gold medal in wrestling for Canada. Yes. But before then, let me quickly tell you as your background. In 1994, you were the captain of Nigerian wrestling team, uh, uh, team to the Commonwealth, to Commonwealth Games. Games that were held in Victoria. Yes. And thereafter, you stayed back here to pursue your dream, education and sports. Yes. And you never disappointed. Mr. Gali, welcome to the program. Thank you. Now, this is a year that we're going to the Olympics. And you have been all over the place. Let's start with that because the, the things are very hard to come by in Nigeria now. But the surprise of everybody is that you'll be taking your athletes around the globe. Europe, and about two weeks ago you were in Nigeria. Yes. You took your athletes to the qualifying series and five of your athletes are going to the Olympics. Am I right? Seven. Seven. Yes. And these are the things that have not happened. So you are a magic man. What has been the, what, what has been responsible? Well, uh, first of all, thank you for having me in your studios, and, and thanks for the great job you've been doing. We've been watching you in, in Nigeria. Thank you. Um, I am now the president of the Nigeria Wrestling Federation. I forgot that, because there are many feathers to your <laughs> Yes. Um, and Perhaps you're also a, high t a title chief in Bayern. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also the chairman, of the, tech, the chairman of the Technical Commission of the Nigeria Olympic Committee. Okay. So... Uh, we've been working very hard to get Nigeria on not just the African wrestling map, but at a, on the international stage. Okay. And it starts with these Olympic qualifiers. And, and for the records, uh, wrestling has never won a medal. Nigerian wrestlers have never won a medal at the Olympics. And okay. we're trying to change that. Yeah? Yes, I was the... So if you can do that in Canada, so why not in Nigeria? <laughs> well, I competed. Now, <laughs> now we're trying to get others to do it. Yeah, make it happen. Because I've been... Why not if you become the first athlete or first person to become the first person to win as a play, as, as, a, as a wrestler yes. in the Olympics and also taking Nigerian athletes to the Olympics and win gold medals or silver medals, whatever the case may be. Well, that's our prayer. Okay. So, so what we've been doing over the past, you know, I've, I've been back in Nigeria since 97, mm -hmm. 2007, 2008. I was a technical advisor of the wrestling team for about five years before I became the, 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 pre the president, president of the federation. And uh, we've, we've completely uh, worked on the constitution of the federation. We've looked at uh, age grade competitions. Um, and funding, funding is always an issue. But we've been working very closely with the Ministry of Youth and Sports. And the minister has been uh, giving us a listening ear. And over the past, uh, especially a couple of years, we've done very well. Okay. Uh, okay, let me stop you right there, because the main thing is not about sports. My, my interest particularly is the sponsorship and the passion. Yes. The, you are one of those people we'll be talking about that have the genuine interest in sports. Yes. And you are carrying that over from competing and also administration. Yes. Now, where do you get... You, are, you agreed that you said the minister will be giving you listening ears, but... Again, perhaps what the minister said about two weeks ago in this our program, that the, the federation do not give them um, advance notice of where they are going and all that. That means you have this plan ahead that keeps the ministry informed. And that's why you'll be getting their support, right? Yeah, we normally, normally uh, for me, I tell my secretary and the board members that, that before we travel to any competition, uh, competition a minimum of three months, 
we have to let the ministry Please aware you know. that we're traveling. Okay, great. And we can only make final submissions to the international body six weeks ahead of time if we are getting the support from the ministry to travel. Yes. Uh, but aside that, as, as a person too, you know, uh, you do a lot. You do a lot for the athletes. Okay. In Nigeria, for you to get athletes to that level, you need to look, about, uh, look at house rents, you need to look at their, their school families. fees, their families. Uh, and those are things you do behind the scenes that people don't know. For us to go to the Africa Games last year and win nine gold medals in wrestling, for us to be the only team able-bodied sports to win a medal at the World Championships last okay. year, uh, that says a lot. But, but what people don't know is the, the work you do, you behind do behind the scenes. Now, what, what amazed me is that when you qualified your athletes in Nigeria, the first thing you said, you said, don't give me the credit. The credit goes to the athletes and the coaches. Not many people will say that. Is it because of your background here, or that was the way you were raised? No, but, but the truth is, is the athletes that are in the arena. But most of your colleagues who are administrators, rather than give the credit to the athletes and the coaches, they tend to be forward. And I, I'm not going to mention names. I know some federations whose faces, the faces of athletes are, 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 are not known in the public, but most of the faces on newspapers and television are on the federation chairman and all that. But you didn't do that. But... What, what, um, what is amaz uh, amazing, or some, uh, amazing to some of us who are watching from outside is that you wrestling, although it was known in Nigeria, because all of us traditionally yeah, wrestling, yeah. but since you took over there, things have been happening in the wrestling federation. It wasn't like that before you came, right? I think we've given it a lot of notoriety. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Nigerians know about wrestling. And, and I think, um, understandably, uh, there is the pressure for wrestling to win medals at the Olympics. And, and I think if given the requisite support over the next 120 days, we should be able to deliver. So are you planning to have a camp outside in Nigeria before the Olympics? Yes, what we have planned, we have a series of competitions. I, I do feel that because of the relative inexperience of most of our top performers on the okay. team, that they need between 15 to 20 matches before the Olympics. Okay. So we've planned competitions and in Poland, um, Spain, Germany, and we're hopefully coming to Toronto for the Canada Cup. See that? Yes. So, so, so if we're able to get that done, um, I want them to come for a month, almost every weekend in June and early July, and then we'll, we should proceed to uh, Rio. I, I want them to be there two weeks ahead of time because we compete on the 17th. Mm -hmm. So I want us to be in Rio for a month outside of the camp and get ourselves ready for the competitions because it's, it's crucial for us that we win a medal this time. Some of our viewers who are watching you reel out this plan that you're going to Europe, going to Canada, planning two weeks before Olympics. Some of begin to wonder that whether we are from space. Uh, you're Nigerian? By the way, you're planning. <laughs> no. Because we, the noise we hear there is that, oh, no sponsorship, no ministry uh, uh, funds. But again, I know that Perhaps because you are, because of the way you know about this sport, you could have also been meeting out to private sponsors. What are the, do you have any initiative? We do, we do have a lot of uh, discussions. You know, unfortunately in Nigeria, a company does not come to you because uh, they look at wrestling and say, okay, this is a, for instance, let me just say Dangote Cement. Yeah. And we're talking about strength and power and, and, and everything that goes with it and that it dov dovetails. That yeah. is not why they will sponsor. Okay. If a company will sponsor wrestling, it's because Dangote Cement or Dangote wants to do a favor to Daniel Egale because okay. they are friends. Okay. And, and I think that is one of the biggest impediments we have with sponsorship in Nigeria. And that, that, okay, that reinforces the argument that we're having that if people like you go into sports, one, you are known, two, they know that you can administer the funds that you are giving to them without, without scandal, the minute the, these private sponsors will come in. You understand what I'm saying? Because they know you will practice this as an athlete and an administrator, you will be getting results. Just like the minister reinforced last two weeks in our program here. Because while the minister is listening to you, let me be an devil's advocate, is that they know that you are going to handle the funds well. But unlike other associations where there are scandals every day. And that's what private sponsors are looking at. You know, it's easier said than done. You, we've been in meetings. I've, I've, been, I've met over 20 sponsors. Okay. And you get very good feedbacks from them, and they tell you, okay, this year is, is, is not going to work out this year, but next year you come. Mm -hmm. 
and you go the next year and it's still the same story. So, so yes, we're, we're making inroads. There are lots of discussions. One or two people will come and say, okay, I'm interested in this athlete. I'll support, you know, we'll give uh, 300,000 for a ticket for this tournament. Mm -hmm. But to have uh, a team sponsor that will come in and say for the next four years, this is what we'll do. We'll give they you all the kids. Your body language. Your body language now is giving a lot of positivity coming out. Yes. You, uh, with the Wrestling Federation, being the president of that federation, athletes have been going on competitions, winning, no scandal, positive press by the following you. I have read reports from my colleagues in Nigeria. You have, it's like the, the part of the federation, they are reporting you well. So the companies are watching you. And I guess as you are building a base for them, if you choose, if they allow you, because I know it's a madras there, yes. to continue there, maybe have a long-term project, you will, reach, you will get there. And I, I know that. I, I, I do think so, too. Because I, when I look at sports in the early 90s, I find people like Mobile, Shell, yeah. uh, Trip, Pink involved, Milk, involved. Nestle, yeah. um, all over, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, yeah. they yeah. were sponsoring, yeah. but they disappeared. The reason why my, my investigation is that they choose not to be associated with sports because there are a lot of scandals going on in sports. But with people like you, which we have been preaching for years, genuine interest, passion, and being able to administer properly, which of course would have been would have been modest to you, you have shown along the way. But I must have to thank you. But now, the athletes that are going for you, you, you have your coaches in place. Are they Nigerians? They're all Nigerians. And that is the good thing about our program. We don't have any foreign coach. Our athletes, none of them are based abroad. Um, we never had any world medal. You know, we had a foreign coach, yeah. a Bulgarian coach from 86 till 1995. Yes. We, never won, we never even competed for a bronze medal at the World Championships. We came in, I came in in 2007 with our Nigerian group. By 2010, we had the, the first medal yeah. for Nigeria. 2012, we wrestled for bronze at the World Championships. So it's not that the foreign and coach in 2000, is magic. 2015, we won another bronze medal at with the World Nigerian Championships. Coaches. With Nigerian coaches and Nigerian training, everything has been done in Nigeria. And I do think that we, it, it's not about the talent, it's not about the bodies. Yeah. I think it's, it's funding, it's administration that is our problem now. And, our, and when, when we get that done, I think we'll be fine. I have repeated it often that I don't see any reason why Nigeria with proper planning should not be coming home with between five and ten medals at every Olympics. If well articulated planned. and planned. Yes. I see no reason why not. So, viewers, that's Mr. Honorable Daniel Egali of Bayesta State House of Assembly. Yes, sir. The president of Nigeria Wrestling Federation, right? Yes. And the first Canadian to win an Olympic gold medal in wrestling. Yes. And also leading Nigeria to the Rio Olympics in summer. And hoping to come with a medal. I'm hoping to come with a medal. <laughs> and perhaps create a record having wrestled in Nigeria and, um, and Canada winning an Olympic gold medal and also taking up athletes to the Olympics and also winning a gold medal. And that, that, that would be a that would be a dream. That would be something that would be exciting, right? It, it, it will be if we're able to win a medal. I, I first of all, want a medal. And anytime I talk about a medal, everybody says, gold medal. I said, but the gold medal is a medal, too. A medal, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so we're working towards a medal, and I'd be gratified. And I think it will change the lives of these athletes so much more positively if we're able to come back with a medal. OK. On a personal note, your kids, uh, of course, I know your kids. Uh, um, <laughs> Let me not mention his name. He's a very good friend of my son. But again, are you going to encourage him to go into wrestling? He be like wrestles. Yeah. My first son. <laughs> <laughs> He's 10 years old. He wrestles. He wrestles, but he likes soccer. But I know soccer. he likes soccer. He likes soccer more than wrestling. And I keep teasing him. I said, well, I can understand. You know, wrestling is not a game. You don't play. You, don't you, play. you wrestle. Perhaps soccer more, is a game. Perhaps more, more money comes from <laughs> soccer. So I'm going to encourage you to stick with soccer. Let's forget about that. Day. Maybe it's because when a goal is scored, you, can, you don't take the blame. It's a goalkeeper <laughs> or it's a defender. <laughs> In wrestling, you lose, you lose. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, have to, I cannot thank you enough, uh, Mr. Gali, for coming to the program. And that shows your honesty and modesty. You are not taking the title of a chief yet, are you? Not yet. I have but a lot of I a lot of them. A lot of, back home, a lot of right? them, but I've well, not. You chose to I'm not. That, Mr. Yeah, Gale. yes, Mr. Gale. Well, thank you very much for coming to this program. Thank you. And I wish you the best in the Olympics. We will follow you to Olympics and will report your success here.
Thank you. And I can only wish you a journey back to Nigeria because you are just here for a while, right? Yes, just okay. uh, for a brief while. Nigeria needs you. Yes, so more than Canada <laughs> right now. <laughs> Good luck, sir, and uh, I wish you the best. Thank you so very viewers, much. So viewers, that's Mr. Daniel Igala, an icon in Canada and a superstar in Nigeria, a lawmaker for that matter, and taking Nigeria at least to the Summer Olympics in Rio, Brazil. And we wish him the best of luck. With that, I say have a good night.